In this video I explain my paper Navier-Stokes Existing and Smoothness Problem to Answer from 2017. Smooth solution does not always ex exist for the equations as they are currently known. A counterexample is given uh, by uh, completing the equations and showing the, how they will uh, work properly. At the paper, the whole path is shown. In this video, I will concentrate on the key points. These key points are uh, also not, actually nothing new. They are just previously ignored the solutions for the known equations uh, for momentum and uh, <laughs> alternate depth, for example, and uh, can be found for many textbooks. So what does it mean uh, with, uh, what, with uh, these equations tell to us? First we need to notice that uh, the turbulence is defined to through fruit number. Fruit number is the inertial forces uh, compared to external field. It's the ratio of these, these two aspects. And, uh, and these equations show that uh, even when the inertial forces are greater than the external field, the, the flow is uh, not turbulent uh, in the sense that there is uh, extreme losses created. Uh, when something is split on the parts, if it's fluid, which is easily deformate, deformated through external forces, uh, uh, when it's moving or so, this is only one aspect of of, uh, of splitting the fluid. Uh, the, the second is the, that there is also the internal forces, that the, the particles are also able to hold together. Uh, so these two uh, forces must be added together. And just be, uh, after the, the destruction, destructing forces are uh, goes over this limit, they start to split the fluid on the parts and, and dissipate energy. So uh, it practically means that the, uh, when the external field pushes the flow, it's mostly gravity, uh, pushes the flow, it causes the flow to move. And uh, at the maximum velocity which uh, this can give uh, to a flow over a over some object is uh, fruit one. So uh, if, if there is more acceleration to be happened, there must be also a level change or, or other, other ways used to, uh, to accelerate it, the flow velocity upper, upper fruit number one. But even, even though it's co it goes above this velocity, you can decelerate the flow without that it breaks because the internal uh, traction, the internal forces of the flow is holding the flow together and, and make it possible to decelerate uh, up to fruit number square root 3. After this point, uh, the, the inertial forces are too high that the external field and internal field can hold the flow together. So uh, this uh, this derivation of these uh, previously ignored roots revives revives our us that uh, that uh, the flow is actually stable up to the root one and even above. And uh, thereafter it becomes labile, so it's, uh, it's, it starts to be wavy and, uh, and uh, not, not, many, not so uh, solid. Uh, uh, or, or, or also labile means that uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it can be uh, having many positions, but uh, after the fruit number square root 3, it becomes undefined. The forces are, are uh, in the level that, uh, uh, that any, any 
movement can happen and, and, and this is the point where it starts to be split. And as it's split, there, there have, there, everything is so undefined uh, that, uh, that uh, under the point that the energy is dissipated to the level that it becomes again defined. And this is the, this is the, the story in which the math explains us. It's very easy to understand why uh, these rules are previously being ignored because the result they give is actually the energy dissipation rate. They don't tell anything about uh, why the energy is dissipated and uh, uh, the result which they give is that the energy dissipation rate factor is above 1 between fruit one and uh, fruit square root three, and this is obviously completely impossible nonsense if we think about the fundamentals of physics. So it means like uh, the efficiency is up of 100 percent, totally, completely impossible. So uh, therefore, uh, it's no surprise that uh, though the answer is so simple. It's uh, never before correctly seen. My approach to the issue was that I was I already got this idea about that the fluid is split, and this is the cause of the dissipation. So when I uh, noticed uh, what the math explains and tells to us, I wasn't disturbed about the information because I saw the, already the possibility that this can be, this can have a reasonable explanation. This explanation is also clearly supported by the experimental data. The book from Wente Joe, Open Channel Hydraulics from year 1959, has a picture with, uh, which explains hydraulic jump. There is the USPR experimental curve, which uh, shows that there is no losses below root number 1.73 square root 3. This experimental curve fits perfectly to the new equation. The missing part of the curve is uh, drawn in this picture with the red line. The theoretical energy losses were calculated by the equation from Press from year, year 1860, though Mr. Press has also already stated his opinion of the uncertainties of the correctness of this formula. No wonder, because the experimental data deviates almost 5% from this theoretical curve and this even to the impossible direction. The theoretical losses are greater than the measurement shows. Here is the new formula and the parameter which I have derived in my paper and uh, needs to be added to the Navier-Stokes equation to make them complete. I've nominated it as uh, delta S and uh, it's not a coincidence. Uh, it is an entropy-like uh, parameter, though uh, it also violates, violates uh, the entropy laws, so it's not purely like an entropy. But uh, here we need to invent some new words to describe it properly. One way to construct the Navier-Stokes equations is shown in the paper and also discussed there. At the end I want to go back to the beginning of the idea, the paper from Gordon McKay, where he clearly states that the change in fruit number uh, is the cause for turbulence and uh, that, that might uh, be the major uh, source and reason for the energy dissipation. This is not directly said here so, but this is what it means. Thanks for watching.